thinking back to the, the Leafs game back in November, what did they do to limit your chances? Uh, very similar to what Seattle did. Uh, they were five together. They were over top of us. They protected the middle of the ice really well in their own end. Um, you know, so that game coupled with the game last night are learning opportunities for us how to create more offense. When we're playing teams that play tight checking, I mean, I think what Seattle did to us yesterday is a lot of what we've done throughout the year to our opponents. Coach, just to, to, to further on that as a learning experience, they, they had a pretty big defense that can also move the puck. I'm talking about Seattle last night. Uh, what do you think the team can take from facing that? Because that's sort of, you know, that's been kind of the downfall in the playoffs in the past few years for the Bruins is facing a defense like that. Yeah, you got to refuse to be deterred, right? Uh, you have to go to hard areas. You got to find ways to spin off people. Um, they were like they had four back all night long. Uh, you know, not dissimilar to what Vegas and uh, somebody else that did it really well to us, uh, Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, you're going to face that when I mean, you face good teams and the playoffs. Are, uh, they're going to be tight checking. See. The easy ice is always on the outside. You got to fight for the hard ice, and you know you got to fight for every foot of ice. It's called a lot of coaches like to use the term two hundred foot hockey player. Well, you know if you, if you want to be a good offensive hockey player, it's those last ten feet in front of the blue paint that you got to get to. Is there any extra buzz for the for this game? I mean, you see division rivals so rarely these days. It's like you know, first place against second place. Does it feel like a big game? Yeah, I, I think it's a it's a bigger game than the average regular season game. Um, I, I don't know if it's, you know, at the point where it's, you know, like how important is, how much does this dictate anything? I, I don't think it's that because we're still not even at all star break. But it's an important game for both teams. They've lost two out of three. We've lost one. And uh, at home, we've gone overtime uh, the other two prior games before we won. So uh, we need to get our game in order, and tomorrow's a good opportunity against one of the teams, I would say, you know, Toronto, uh, Carolina, and ourselves have probably been the three teams that have been consistently the best so far this year, so it's a good test for us. You guys have gone first half of the season without a losing streak. Is there anything you can point to and say that is why we're able to avoid that? Uh, our leadership, I think, you know, uh, and the pride in the locker room. Once we lose one game, uh, you know, I think to get back on track is really important to our group, and I, I think that shows in how we play that next game. I think it's easier to move on from a loss as a coach or as a player? As a player. Because it stays with you as a coach. You know, as a player, it stays with you, but as a coach, you, you always want to, you, you, you're always worried about the group and how you did so many things and where you maybe could have been better and help the team be better. You know, that those things go through your mind as a player, you go through your own shifts, you go through, you know, what you could have done better, and that's minimal compared to what a coach goes through in their life. Is it fair to say last night, because of the type of game it was, the type of team you faced, that the brusque would have given you a, a, a very significant tool? Yeah, that's it's it's more than fair to say. Yeah, I mean he against anyone, I mean he's a difference maker. You know, his speed, his ability to put uh, defensemen on their heels, you know, make them back off so they're not so tight because they know if the puck squirts in behind them, they're not catching it. When you review tape on a game last night, how many new things do you see that you didn't see, you know, during the course of the game? And the second part of that question, just about the Kraken, did they make you do things that you don't normally do? Because we obviously in the third period are used to seeing this team come back. Yeah, um, I just thought that the, the Kraken, their defensive game got better every period. Um, and I thought that we forced too many pucks. Instead of sticking to what has given us success by holding on to pucks, I, I thought we started to force things. And that's why I say they did to us what I think we've done to a lot of teams. Whereas teams tend to force things, then we counterattack, we get on man rushes, and we get good looks off the rush. Uh, if, as far as your the first part of your question, uh, is there things they did to us that no, I don't think they did anything. I, I just thought they executed at such a high level that it made us a little, I don't know if we're frustrated, but we weren't very good. Our execution with the puck in all three zones wasn't what we're used to seeing. I have to think coming in here, uh, to the job new, Noshek would not have been a player you knew much of if he was one of seven or eight hundred players. 
for the lack of what have you what have you come to know from this game maybe that you didn't know or appreciate or uh, like it's, so I know him a little bit because he was in the Western Conference uh, with Vegas um, but I didn't know him as well as I do now I, I didn't know how smart he was uh, with it without the fuck his offensive hockey sense and defensive hockey sense is really good. He supports his teammates really well. Um, that was, I, I knew that like he worked hard. I knew that, uh, you know, he uh, was a good penalty killer. I knew he was a good fourth line player. In Vegas, he was a good fourth line player for them. And, you know, both coaches used him uh, in important minutes, you know, whether it was penalty kill or shut down type uh, fourth line minutes, buildable down. Uh, I've gotten to appreciate how well he understands the momentum in the game. Uh, you, after last night's game, you talked about the batteries being low for the guys. How did you sense they felt today? And is there a, is there like a, a sickness kind of going to the room that you're trying to manage as well? Like, were there guys that remember the weather? No, no, no. There's yeah. Uh, you would have thought it by the way we play. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that. It's not, no. <coughs> Probably to hear me cough. Uh, no, there's no illness. Uh, what was the other? I was just saying, like you said after last night, the batteries were low on the guys. You know, how do you think they felt today coming in and getting back out there for a little bit? Well, I, I think everyone was disappointed. Like it, we're not used to coming in here, uh, and we lost at home. Uh, you know, it. Uh, I was talking with Brad Marshawn about it. Uh, we we're having breakfast together, and we were just talking about how, you know, there, there's an empty feeling in your stomach today because, and we haven't had that, and that. Uh, it kind of pisses you off that we, excuse my language, right now, I'm better word for it, uh, for like what we've been used to, you know? And uh, it stings a little, you know? And you want to get that feeling back, like of, you know, not only internally, but you could tell the whole city was rallying behind what we were doing, you know? We got to get them, we want to get them back. Just a fr oh, go ahead, Steve. Uh, Taylor looked like he had his legs early on last night especially early on, but did you, did you sense any frustration in his game with you know, the goals not coming? Um, probably. I mean, I don't see the frustration in him personally, um, because when I talk to him, I talk more about the details and the process that allow him to get chances. Like, I, I thought this game was good. He took a couple of pucks hard to the net. When he's doing that, he's going to create either goals for himself, rebound opportunities, or will draw penalties, right, to get on the power play. So I, I was happy with where his game was at, and if he keeps playing like that, the pucks are going to go in. He's too good. You, you mentioned the, the games leading into this, the home games I'm talking about leading into this, going to shootouts, overtimes, what have you. Teams were taking you guys down to the wire there. I'm sure as a coach, you probably notice maybe things that are leading to that, mistakes that are being made or trends more than the players because when you're winning, it's hard to notice. Did you see that sort of kind of building and – did it come to fruition last night? Yeah, I, I think we've seen it, right? Uh, if you take away, especially the West Coast trip, I thought we got, we got to our game. Like, I thought the LA Kings were one of the better teams we've played. They played a real tight checking game, but we found a way to get to the inside there compared to last night, you know? Where, and so for whatever reason, we've been in a little bit of a malaise here at home and then pre and post holidays games, you know? Mm -hmm. like, and, a little bit's the grind of the season. Um, last night, I, you know, there, there's no grind of the season last night. That was a really good team that we were excited to play, and we didn't uh, match their intensity and work ethic last night. What did you think of Copeland? I liked him. I thought he was good. He, I thought he was good on a penalty kill. Uh, I thought he's a good support player. As far as, like, when we're talking about Nosek, I thought he has a lot of those similar traits. Um, so I thought for his first game in the NHL where – we weren't on top of our game. I thought he was noticeable as far as pushing the needle forward for us. Use him again tomorrow, or is it out of the mix? Uh, yeah, yeah, we haven't made that decision yet, just because, you know, it's Toronto, and um, not because he doesn't deserve it, but, you know, sometimes in the back of my head, it's like the guys that have got you here should get rewarded with playing Toronto. Yeah. That's what's in my head right now. He used Zaboral on the road for a game. What would you think of his? He played well. Yeah, he didn't get a lot of minutes because to play 7D is hard to get minutes for all of D. Uh, but he carried the puck. He made assertive plays with the puck. I thought he was his gaps were good. So I we like this game. One more. There's one more. 
you had a couple of drills today. Uh, I don't see a lot, a lot. And I just wanted a, a, a passing drill where the guy's in the middle. And the Monkey in the middle. That's what we call it. <laughs> and then that three on two sort of half court game where. Yeah. yeah. Were those specific, are those just in the rotation, or are you using those based on the last game, or thinking ahead to the next game? Uh, the passing drill is a little bit of the guy in the middle having a good defensive stick, and uh, it's a fun game for the guy. You don't want to be the guy in the middle, so take pride in your passing, right? Um, so that's and, and it's a good way to get guys to kind of have fun out there before we get into practice, and the guys like it. Um, I know I loved it as a player. Uh, and then the last drill, that's a drill we've done fairly often, we haven't done in a while, and that's about getting our forwards on the inside. We gotta get inside the dots to score, you gotta attack the net. Don't get outside the dots, don't be behind the net, then you're not gonna score from behind the net. So you're not using this specifically because you lost last night because you think you need that against Toronto. They're just in the rotation. They're in the rotation, but it's part of our game that we did not like yesterday. So it's getting our players in the habits of getting back to hard areas.